With the rise of teams like the Sunshine Coast Lightning and sports like the AFLW, women in sport are getting an ever-increasing profile in Australia, but how much have things really changed? Two years after AFLW player Taylor Harris had to endure an online trolling campaign over a photo of her kicking a ball, Norway's beach volleyball team, they call it handball there, have been fined by the European Handball Federation for wearing bike shorts instead of bikini bottoms at a European Championship match in Bulgaria. And this week, the women on Germany's Olympic gymnastics team has raised eyebrows by taking to the floor wearing unitards instead of traditional bikini cut leotards over concerns about the sexualisation of gymnasts. I've got Melinda Tankard Rice with us. She's the movement director for Collective Shout, an Australian organisation fighting the objectification of women. Melinda, thanks for joining us. How different is women's sport uh, viewed traditionally to men's sport? Uh, if we're thinking, you know, what might have been in the past to, to now, 2021, have things changed much? I think traditionally we've seen female athletes objectified uh, and defined by their physical attractiveness and sex appeal in the way that uh, women are objectified uh, sort of anywhere and, and everywhere. Uh, I, I've been really pleased to see some some changes, some more female athletes speaking out and saying, you know, we shouldn't have to be hyper vigilant. We shouldn't have to be self conscious. We shouldn't have to worry about a potential wardrobe malfunction. Uh, we should be able to focus on our our performance. We've seen this with the uh, Norwegian women's beach handball team uh, who defied the rules and were fined the equivalent of $2,000 for, quote, inappropriate clothing for wearing bike shorts instead of bikini bottoms. Yeah, it's incredible. And, seeing it, yeah, and as you've said, we've seen it with the Germans as well. And I love what these German women have done. They wanted to be a a role model for for young gymnasts who don't feel who can't don't feel comfortable, who don't feel welcome in the sport, who don't feel safe, given uh, the history of, of sexual abuse in that particular sport. So, we are seeing some changes are well overdue because the past rules have been sexist and quite backward. And yet, the you know the Norwegian team was fined. I mean, why is that still happening? Why isn't the message getting through? It seems to the people on the organising committees and representative uh, bodies that that govern the sports that these women are participating in. Well, that's the exact question we've been posing in a petition we're backing that's being headed by a young Aussie woman who's now living in Norway and is uh, athletic herself. She competes in triathlons. Her, her name is Talitha Stone. And uh, we only this petition was only launched late Friday afternoon and is now rapidly approaching 20,000 signatures. Wow. The fact is, yeah, that the International Handball Federation stipulates that female players must wear bikini bottoms that the regulations state that they can't have a width uh, more than 10 centimeters at the sides it specifies that they must be of clothes clothes fit and cut on an upward angle toward the top of the leg so a close fit and cut to you know really to emphasize it's very specific uh, woman's it's so specific and uh, this is not the case with the men. The men can wear uh, tops and baggy shorts, and that's fine. And again, the women have pointed out, the players have pointed out, that they they, they have to be vigilant. They're always worried. Uh, there's the issue of, of sand getting into, you know, intimate parts. Yep. Um, also, when female athletes are, are menstruating, you know, they don't feel very well protected and very uh, safe to play what is a very dynamic game. Yep. And unfortunately, the International Handball Federation and uh, the uh, European uh, body, which slapped the fine on these women, talks about the need to uphold the attractive look of the game, the attractive aesthetic of the game. Well, you know, that's purely applied uh, to women who then can't perform at the level they'd like to because they, they recognise that they're actually being objectified for their sport. Now, Collective Shout with Talitha Stone has previously campaigned against a thing called the Lingerie Football League. What was that? Yes. <laughs> what was that? Why is that even something we have to talk about? You know, if men want to play gridiron, they can be fully covered and, and have their delicate parts protected. But uh, women were expected to sign up to the Lingerie Football League in Australia if they wanted to play gridiron. And uh, Talitha, again, led a protest against this in 2012 and, and eventually 
uh, Channel 7 dropped its broadcast and we don't hear as much about that game in Australia now. But again, we just continually see these differential standards applied uh, to male athletes compared to uh, female athletes. And uh, that's why, you know, women feel so self-conscious. We, we know that there's a declining rate of girls playing sport. This is uh, global research indicates this because, uh, because of the level of body consciousness, of being uh, worried about being judged for their physical appearance, uh, not feeling, you know, fully safe to, to, to play given the requirements around uh, uniform. This is a, a tragedy because, uh, you know, we need more young girls recognising the strength of their bodies, what their bodies can do and wanting the pure enjoyment and pleasure of sport, which doesn't just give physical benefits, it gives mental health benefits as well. And so that's why we're speaking out. That's why we spoke out about lingerie football. That's why we're supporting the Norwegian women's uh, handball team to be able to wear what they want to wear, to feel comfortable and be able to compete at these uh, high levels. Melinda, given the German gymnastics Olympic team and their unitards, I'm thinking about, oh. you know, gymnastics is typically a sport that uh, teenagers and young children dominate in. How disturbing yes. is it uh, to have this happening in sport that you know they've got attention for wearing a unitard when normally they'd be expected to wear really quite um high cut leotards like the swimmers yes that's right and that's again why i just admire these women so much you know this is the first summer games since larry nasa was exposed and sent to prison for 176 years for sexually abusing hundreds of gymnasts you know including some of the leading stars of that particular sport and again, we see that male gymnasts wear comparatively body covering clothes, singlets, loose shorts. But again, the women are expected to wear these very uh, tight fitting um, suits that really emphasize, you know, their body parts. And I think given the history of um, gymnastics, given the uh, massive abuse of so many girls, if they feel safer uh, playing uh, in more of a, a full body covering, which still enables them to perform at a very high level, to not have to worry about inappropriate photos being taken, about sexual harassment, about sexual comments made about their bodies. If that helps them to achieve those things and to perform at a peak level, then why shouldn't they be allowed to or why should any female athlete be punished or threatened with disqualification as the Norwegians have been uh, for just choosing to play in something that helps them to to feel functional and to perform at a, at a high level. It's a very good conversation to be having, having uh, particularly as the Olympics unfold. Melinda Tankard-Rice, great to catch up with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Annie.